All right, in this video, we will continue learning how to graph sine or cosine using amplitude, period, midline, and phase shift. Let's take a look at problem number nine. Okay, we need to know the period and the midline and the amplitude and the phase shift. So let's talk about the period of this thing. Um, the period is found by doing 2 pi divided by the b value. Now when I say the b value, I'm talking about whatever it is that's multiplying the x. Now uh, I want you to imagine the invisible 1 that's right there. So this is like having 1 half x plus pi over 5. So this 1 half is the b value that we're talking about. So uh, that's why the period is going to be 2 pi divided by one half. Um, but when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as two pi times two. All right, two is the reciprocal of one half. So that's why the period is going to be four pi. So um, let's record that period is four pi. Now, how about the midline? Um, the midline is going to come from this part of the equation. That minus 3 is really a vertical shift down 3, but that's going to cause the midline of our function to drop 3. So that's why the midline will be y equals negative 3. Now, how about the amplitude? All right, the amplitude is going to come from this a value. And um, so that's why the amplitude will be one half. That means we'll go up one half and down one half from the midline. All right, but for right now, let's just record that the amplitude is in fact one half. Now the trickiest part is the phase shift. So let's go real slow and talk about the phase shift. All right, the phase shift comes from this part of the equation right here. All right, but we have to be careful. The phase shift is not pi over five. Remember the b value that we use to calculate the period? Um, remember that this is an invisible one right here. So the b value is one half. So um, let's go ahead and just look at this separately from the rest of the equation. So what I have right now is I have one half x plus pi over five. Now, if there was no uh, one half x, all right, if, this, if there were no one half, and if it was just um, x plus pi over five, then this would be the phase shift, no problem. But the problem is, because there's a b value, that has to be taken outside of parentheses. Okay, it has to be factored out to, to reveal uh, what the phase shift truly is. So the way I take this one half out, um, there's two ways you can think about it. You can think of, about it as dividing both sides by one half. Okay, like any other number. That way these one halves cancel each other out, and that gives me x. And then I have to look at this and think to myself, okay, when you divide fractions, what you do is you multiply by the reciprocal. So this would be pi over 5 times 2. Um, so that would be 2 pi over 5. Okay, so you get 2 pi over 5, um, which will give us the phase shift. When we write it down, we will put negative 2 pi over 5. Uh, because it's the opposite, it's to the left. So negative 2 pi over 5. Now, armed with all this information, it's time to graph the function. All right, let's start with the period, which is 4 pi. Hold that in your brain. Go ahead and throw up a y-axis while you're at it. Um, so since the period is 4 pi, I'm going to come all the way over here and put down my 4 pi. Now I'm going to come all the way over here and put down negative 4 pi. 
All right, if I go halfway right here, then that's going to be, uh, of course, 2 pi. If I go half of that, that's going to make 1 pi, or just pi. And of course, this right here will be 3 pi. And then I can do the same thing on the negative side. All right, put one in the middle, put one in the middle, put one in the middle. So, of course, that'll be negative 3 pi, negative 2 pi, and negative pi. While we're at it, let's put some marks on the y-axis. Okay, so this would be like 1 and 2. And this would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's get to graphing. Um, what else we got? The midline. The midline is at y equals negative 3. All right, remember because of that. So let's go ahead and draw our midline, our new midline, at negative 3. Okay, I kind of missed that a little bit. Good thing I can do that. Feel free to use a ruler so your stuff is not sloppy. Okay, so there's my new midline. Um, so now I need two things. Which function is this again? We're doing the cosine function. Just remember, just real quick, when I'm doing the cosine function, I go high on the line, below on the line, above. That's how the cosine function works. Uh, notice that it's not flipped upside down or anything, but um, the a value is one half so I need to do my amplitude instead of going up one down one I'm gonna go up one half down one half okay so so here I go um, I'm gonna start off up one half right it's not about the negative 2.5 it's me going up one half from the midline um, and then this one should be on the line. The next one should be down by a half. And uh, the third one should be on the line. And the uh, last one should be up by a half. Okay, I'm not going to connect these dots yet because the one thing I have not done uh, is the phase shift. All right? Um, if there was no phase shift, this would be the final answer and I'd just draw it. But I need to move these five points uh, to the left by 2 pi over 5 uh, before I connect them. Now, I need to figure out how far it is to the left um, if I'm going to go negative 2 pi over 5. So, um, look, remember that this is negative two-fifths pi. Um, so what is negative two-fifths? Well, two divided by five is 0.4. Okay? So that means we're talking about negative 0.4 pi. Negative two-fifths pi. So negative 0.4 pi um, that's a little bit less than half pi. It's very close to, you know, 0.5 would be half of a, of a pi. So it's going to be just a little bit short of that. So I'm not going to go very far to the left at all. It's just um, a little bit, almost half. So I'm going to put a mark showing what a negative two-fifths pi shift, phase shift looks like. So like I said, it'll be about like right here. All right, this would be approximately negative 2 pi over 5. So this is what it looks like when I'm, I'm moving the 0. I've moved it to the left about half a unit. I need to do the same thing with all of these. So this pi is going to be moved to the left um, about half a unit. This 2 pi is going to move to the left almost half a unit. 3 pi is moving to the left halfway. And this 4 pi is moving to the left 
almost halfway. So these are going to be where my five key values are. Instead of where these green uh, points are, these are the new. So you'll notice that um, all I have to do is do the same thing with these dots. So I'm going to take this dot and I'm going to move it over. I'm going to take this dot and I'm going to move it over. All right, same, same, and same. Okay, so the pink dots are the real deal. All right, the green was my temporary skeleton. Um, so never connect those. Only connect up your final answer. So that's going to look like this. Oh, my pen's acting up. Okay, so there you go. All righty then, let's do one more example. Number 10, obviously. Um, the period is what we do first. So the period, we can get the period by doing 2 pi divided by the B value. This is the B value. So the skirt, so the period is pi. Awesome. So, equation of the midline, don't you know? Well, that's your uh, equation of the midline is going to come from that um, shift, that k value. So that's going to be y equals, what was that, a 1? I already forgot. Etch a sketch brain. Amplitude is going to come from this number here in the front. So amplitude of 4. All right, amplitude is always positive, by the way. Um, oh, shucks, time for the phase shift. Stand back. All right, one more time. Let's understand how phase shift works. First of all, the phase shift is not pi because of the, the two messing it up for us. Um, so we're going to take this part of it. Okay, and I'm just going to recopy it. So I've got 2x minus pi. We have to factor out the 2. So meaning I'm going to put this 2 outside of the parentheses. Um, to know what goes inside the parentheses, I need to divide everything by 2. So these cancel out. That's why I'll have just x right there. But here, as you can see, I have minus pi over 2. So this is the phase shift, um, but it is the opposite. So I'm going to put positive pi over 2 for the phase shift. All right, positive because we are going to go to the right by pi over 2. Okay, let's do the graph now. All right, let's throw a y-axis on there. Um, now, it's time for the period. All right, the period is pi. So what you do with that is you come over here and uh, close to the end and you mark that with your period. Um, then you go halfway and put another mark. All right, half of pi is uh, pi over 2, don't you know? And then half of that again is going to be right here. That's going to be, whoa, slow down. That's going to be pi over 4. And then this one, there's always going to be three of these. So that's going to be 3 pi over 4. All right, we can do the same thing with the negative numbers over here. So that's going to look like this. Now let's put some marks here on the y-axis. Okay, and now let's do the midline. The midline is at y equals 1. So let's go ahead and draw the midline. Hmm, kind of missed that one, didn't I? That's okay, because I'm on a computer. 
Okay, so there's my midline. Now I'm going to look at what the function is and what the amplitude is. So I'm dealing with a sine function and um, of course the amplitude is 4. I guess I didn't really need to look down there. Um, sine function, amplitude 4. So we know how the sine function goes. So let's execute a sine function pattern. All right, looking at the midline, we know our first point will go here. All right, because the sine function starts off on the midline. And then it goes up, back to the middle, down, and back to the middle. Um, amplitude 4, though. So I'm going to go up 4. So that's actually going to put me here. Okay, and then back down to the midline. And then down 4. One, two, three. Okay, I could have put an extra mark on here, um, but I'm just going to fake it. So down four, and then back to the midline once again. Now, notice how I am not connecting these dots, because this is not the final answer. All right, just double checking to make sure it's not going to be upside down or anything. Of course, the reason why this is not the final answer is because we haven't done the phase shift yet. Okay, that has to come last. So now we need to shift each of these points to the right by pi over 2. Okay, now the actual distance of pi over 2 varies depending on what problem you're actually doing. So you have to be very careful. Look at our scale. See pi over 2 right there? Look how big that is. All right, this is pi over 2 on this particular graph. So pi over 2 is 2 marks over to the right. So um, it's half the period, OK? So each one of these um, green dots, whoa, that's not a pen, that's a highlighter. Each one of these green dots is going to have to be moved over um, 2 full units, 2 full marks. In fact, I'm going to need to add on two full marks onto the end of this uh, graph here. So let me just extend my x-axis. Maybe I can just grab it. Can I grab it and stretch it? I'm going to try. OK. So I'm going to put some extra markings on here. So here's an extra mark. And there's an extra mark. All right, two full marks. So here I go. In fact, maybe I'll work backwards. Um, you know what? I should probably stretch out my midline as well. All right, go, 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 midline, go. All right, so first I'm going to move this point. So that point's going to move over, again, two full units. All right, so that's going to land here. Now this point right here, I'm going to move that over one, two full units. So that's going to be here. Next, I got this one. This is going to move over two full units and land right on top of that one. But that's OK. Um, so now it's time for this one. I'm going to move that over two full units. And that's going to land right here. OK, and finally, I'm going to move this one over two full units, and that's going to land here. So as you see the overall image, it used to go right here. And now it's, the whole thing has been shifted over two full units. So now I can draw my final answer, which is going to be something like this. OK, all right, messed up a little bit on the end. But good enough, you get the idea. And that is how you graph a sine function or a cosine function using period, midline, amplitude, and phase shift. Here endeth the lesson.